Hello everybody. In this tutorial I want to discuss with you the two-way or two-factor ANOVA with replication and how we can do that in Excel. Now best way to start with these things is with a concrete example. So here's an example where we would usually apply a two-way ANOVA or two-factor ANOVA. So the scenario is we want to test two different drugs and we want to check their efficiency in reducing the volume of a tumor. And we compare these two drugs, drug A and drug B, to a control where the patients have been just given a placebo. So that's one thing. We also want to know whether male and female patients actually respond to these drugs in the same manner. And that is why this is a two-way uh, ANOVA or two-factor ANOVA, because we are testing two factors. We test drugs and we test gender. So we have two factors here, drug versus the gender. And we want to see whether there's a difference between the drugs and the control and whether there is a difference between the gender and also whether male and female patients react in the same way to the drugs. So what we can do is we can set up three different null hypotheses. So let's start with the first one and that is the drug hypothesis. So here we've got our null hypothesis and we say when we look at the populations from which they, we are taking our samples, there's no difference between the population mean for drug A, so the population mean for drug A equals population mean for drug B, and that is the same for the population mean of the control. So basically what that says is that there's no difference between drugs and control other than obtained just simply by sampling error. Our second null hypothesis is the gender. So here we've got the gender and our null hypothesis is Basically, there's no difference how male and female patients react. So we would have mu female equals mu male. That's uh, the population for the female and the population of the males. And there's no difference how they actually react. And the third hypothesis that is what is called the interaction. And here we, our null hypothesis would be that no difference, and that's a little bit difficult to formulate in mathematical terms, no difference how male react to different drugs, different drugs and control compared to female. And I just simply approve it like that. So these are our three null, null hypotheses. And of course we can formulate the alternative hypotheses where we just simply say, yes, there is a difference. So especially here in this case, in the first case of the drug case, we our, our alternative hypothesis would be there is at least one difference. So let's see how we can do that in Excel. Now the first thing that we need to do is we need to put these things into the right format so that Excel can actually deal with it. And the correct format for that would be we just simply take one of the data sets and here it is the females and move them so that they are in line 
with the other data set. So what we have here is we've got two blocks, gender, male and female, and here are our data, drug A, drug B, and the control. Um, also important in this case for Excel is that for each block that we are looking at, we have the same number of counts. Take this one with me. So, and the same number of counts. And we've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine here. So nine page, nine observations. And uh, again, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine observations here. If the numbers are different, then Excel would not be able to do this calculation properly. Then you obviously would have to resort to specialized software uh, uh, or do it by hand, which is, of course, is a little bit of a pain. So how can we do this calculation? Well, we go to the data tab here, go to data analysis and look for ANOVA two factor with replication. And the replication are actually these numbers here because we are replicating sort of the experiment of giving one male the different drugs. Okay, so we now are asked for the input, the input range, and we take all of it that we have here. So here, that's the input range. That is this one here. We now are asked how many rows per sample. So we've decided that we have nine rows here. Our alpha, that is the significance level, we set this to 0.05, which means we have a 95% confidence interval then. And all we need to do is uh, select an output range. Let's put that here, the output range, and let's run the two-factor ANOVA that Excel does it does for us. So what have we got? So we've got the drug A, drug B, and the control. Uh, it's always good to check that we've got the right thing. So we've got nine for drug A, nine for drug B, nine for drug C, and that is for the male here. So we get the average tumor size 116, 175, and for the control 319. For the female, we have a similar output. We have 103, 149, and 270. So are they different from each other? Male and female. And are these values, say 116, 175, and 319, are they significantly different from each other when it comes to the drugs? And for the control, again, we have 109, 162, and 295. And again, the question is, are they different? Now, what we are looking at here is really the, not just the summary table that we have here, we are looking at these numbers that we have here. And there's one thing that is very important, and that is this interaction number here that I highlight here. And this refers to our third null hypothesis. Is there an interaction? And if we look at it, what we see here is a p-value. This p-value for the interaction is 0 0.607. So here we've got the p-value P equals 0.607 for the interaction. And we know that obviously the p-value is larger than our alpha, which we set to 0.05. So that means we reject the null hypothesis, reject H null, Let's call it the third null hypothesis. And we say that we 
do not sorry we do not reject the null hypothesis we accept the null hypothesis remember if p is high h naught can stay so we do not reject the null hypothesis and say there is no interaction no interaction and that means male and female patients respond in the same way in the same way to the different drug treatments to the different drug treatments so there's no difference between male and female and that's actually quite good because if there was an interaction so if we had rejected the null hypothesis if there was an interaction we would have to stop we would have to stop our analysis and say right we know that there is an interaction they both react differently to the various drug treatments and therefore we would we could not carry on with our analysis so very important if there is an interaction if interaction stop stop with the analysis and do any further analysis separately from each other in our case however there is no interaction so we can carry on so it's always very important to look at this interaction line first but in our case they both react in the same manner to the drug treatment and therefore we can carry on with our analysis so what we can do now is we can say the next thing that we want to look is the columns and in the columns we have the different drugs so here we've got the columns and what we see here is a p-value of 5 times 10 to the minus 13 so that was our first one here so here the p-value is 5 times 10 to the minus 13 and this is much much sl smaller than our alpha of 0 0.05 so if p is low h naught must go therefore in this case we reject reject the our first null hypothesis and say the means are not the same or in other words there is a difference there is a difference between treatments and we would now need to figure out in a post hoc test where the difference is located and that will be done in a different uh, video so we know that there is a difference between the drugs obviously we would probably say well perhaps between a and the control because that's the smallest and the largest one if we look at the, the the averages here so between drug a and the control is probably a significant difference is there a significant difference between drug a and drug b perhaps but again that is something that we would need to do with an additional post hoc test lastly what we want to look at is the what is called here the sample and here the sample refers to our second null hypothesis that is the gender so that would be here our gender 
And here the p-value for our sample is 0 0.05 rounded 7. So here p equals 0 0.057. And this one is larger than our alpha at 0 0.05. So this means if P is high, H0 can stay. So we do not reject our second null hypothesis. We do not reject our second null hypothesis and we say basically the mean for the female and the males is statistically the difference is not significant so mu m equals mu f and both male and female there's basically no difference between male and female which is good because what we then can do when we do a post hoc test we can say we can really ignore ignore gender in this case the drugs don't seem to have any uh, preference for male or female in terms of how how well they work so this is how you actually can use a two-factor ANOVA to get quite a lot of information or from a data set the really important point is that if you have something like that here uh, that when you do a two-factor ANOVA always look at the interaction first and if this p-value is smaller than your alpha so smaller than 0 0.05 if there is an interaction then you need to stop you can't just then look at these values and you have to um, you have to analyze the blocks uh, separately and can't lump them together in our case here we did not detect an interaction and therefore we could continue and test whether the drug has the drug treatment has a difference and whether there is a gender specific difference so the drug has a difference gender no i hope this makes sense and thank you very much for watching